You don't want the truth, because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties, you want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. We use words like honor, code, loyalty. We use these words as a backbone of a life spent defending something. You use them as a punchline. Just like Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Would you like to learn from those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level? Best-selling author of Speak Easy and master connector Lou Diamond is here to connect you to some of the most inspiring and amazing people on this planet. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another spectacular episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond, and today on Thrive Loud, we have a gentleman who, from being an immigrant to Canada over 50 years ago to launching his fifth startup that is working with small business leaders, providing access to fair credit or small business owners globally, is truly spectacular, an unbelievable entrepreneur, and we have him on Thrive Loud today. He's the founder of Uplink, and today we're gonna learn about what Uplink is, about him, and a lot of other fun things because we're gonna have an engaging conversation with this pretty incredible entrepreneur. Thrive Out listeners, Ron Benegby. Ron, how are you today? I'm amazing. Lou, it's such a pleasure and honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Truly a pleasure. The pleasure is mine. The pleasure's our listeners because when they uncover and, and learn about your story, oh my goodness, they're going to love all of it. So he's coming to us from Toronto, Canada in their new corporate headquarters, which we will talk about very shortly in this interview. This is what I want to do, Ron, because we may have to rewind and go all the way to the womb because I mentioned that we've got an interesting <laughs> uh, uh, start to what your career is. Can you bring bring people up to speed in the fast forward version, if you would, about your interesting upbringing, and how this thing that you're doing now became your gig. Yeah, I mean, I'm an immigrant, as you stated. Uh, We migrated to Canada in the early 70s, and I was a little boy, and we were poor. We had no money. My dad baked bread at night just to put food on the table, and he went to a bank in 1973, and he asked him for a small business loan. To which the banker told him, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, Mr. Benegby, we have specific lending criteria here at the bank. Unfortunately, you don't fall within that criteria. However, I believe in people. Here's $5,000. I'm going to take a shot on you. And my dad, you know, he was he was so happy. He took that money. He started a small business that turned into a medium sized business. My mom followed suit a year later. And really that $5,000, Lou, became the springboard for our family's lives in Canada. And, and I share that story with you because I've grown up in a small business family. My successes professionally and my failures have come as a small business owner. What all small businesses have gone through in the last few years was the impact that COVID has had on business and now going into these uncertain economic times, access to fair and ethical non-predatory credit has never been more difficult or more important Mm. for a small business owner. And at Uplink, we don't lend money to small business. However, we utilize data and we utilize science in a very specific and unique way to help small business lenders say yes more often than they say no. So that that is the tie-in. We're very purpose-driven. And it's just really important for us to get small business lenders approval rates up so we can put, they can put more money 
into the economy, which benefits all of us at a community level. I, I love this. I love when we have uh, entrepreneurial founders who really have a purpose all the way from the beginning to something that was so important to you and recognizing how important it is for that that aspect. Let, let's do a little bit about what's going on in the credit space right now, because this is actually important in today's world. And you hit upon this, that look, uh, rates in the United States here have gone up. I'm sure, you know, everywhere is difficult. COVID has been challenging, supply chain issues. It's almost like uh, the train was going 60 billion miles an hour. It stopped on a dime. And then they said to try and restart it again. And you can only imagine what happens inside in that collision and the delays and the fixing of everything. Ron, the credit world we're in today, you mentioned a lot of predatory players out there. There's a lot of stuff that's challenging. How often are small business owners unaware of, I guess, maybe the types of credit dangers that are out there for what they can borrow all the time yeah. you know i mean as a small business owner if you're dealing with a bank especially a traditional bank your first instinct is to go to the bank and the reality is the likelihood is you don't qualify especially today's small business um the dna has completely changed it there's a lot more sort of individuals, gig economy workers, that kind of stuff, side hustles, e-commerce, Shopify stores, they don't have three years of spectacular audited financials, if they have any financials. And certainly they haven't had enough time to build up an established credit score. And the credit scoring system anyways for small business is weak at best. And I'm being kind. I'm being I would kind. even say it might even be archaic. It, it, well, it's. Are, yeah. it, 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 I, I'm trying to be, you know, respectful to a certain degree. I'm not. I'm so, not, Ron. I, I understand. So, I see what's going on in these companies and the systems they use and the way they look yeah. at stuff. But yeah. So okay. So so to your to your question, I mean, they're going and they're looking for other sources. There's, you know, there are a lot of online sources these days that'll lend money to small business. The challenge is, how many of us really read the fine print? I don't. And I'm an educated, I'm, you know, I, I don't read the fine print. Like I, I just can't. And once you start getting into that fine print and you make qualify for a $50,000, let's say term loan, um, you know, you're, you're paying, you could be paying a lot of money, a lot more yeah. than, you, I don't know, 10, 15, 20% interest that you might be able to get at a bank. Um, you can pay three, four, a lot more than that, five times that easily with some of these online lenders. So so you're looking at situations and say, we got it. We have a need out there. Small businesses need to borrow money. We have an old system of bankers and banking if they, or old credit system that is- Old credit system, yeah. Uh, that is rigid and maybe set in its ways and makes it difficult to provide the, the same flexibility that your dad received where somebody took a chance on someone where there wasn't as much data back then. Now there's a lot more data, a lot more That's information. Right. Help the listeners understand a little bit, like we'll call it the the top line view of how Uplink is providing those small business lenders with the ability to get a better idea or purview as to, hey, this might be a good um, investment for us. This is somebody that we're more likely to give money to and see the success of that not only being paid back, but them thriving as well. Yeah. So what we try to do is uh, we, we use traditional data sources. I don't want to give you the wrong impression that we poo poo them. But what we do is every small business is unique, just like every person is. So we look at the entire ecosystem of the business. And what does that mean? So those are environmental factors, geographic factors, you know, market conditions, things like that. Well, so if we're, if we're talking about a restaurant, we'll look at traffic patterns. Yeah. We'll look at cell phone usage in a specific location versus others. Those are all those are all important pieces of information that provide us signals as to how the business is performing, but the potential the business has to perform during different times of the year and over the next period of time. So what we try to do is bring in information that really addresses, and, and has a good look at the small business at a community level. Yeah. So both macro and micro at a community level, at a, you know, at a city level, and then going all the way up from there. And 
a fairly specific way in which we do that. Statistically been proven to be highly, highly accurate. So I always love to ask this question for those that are providing the lenders with more information, by the way, because this is actually the real cool because you're actually an asset or a service provider to those that are giving the loans and, the, and, and helping them understand it. Um, how, for those that have initially seen what Uplink can bring, how eye-opening, how eye-popping has it been for those lenders to say, oh my God, this is, this is something that is very helpful to me. Or this is, you know, because that, by the way, something that hasn't been out there is this a level of information you're giving. Share with maybe your experience in running this company, what you've seen from those that have been benefiting from utilizing Uplink. Yeah, well, when we started to share the story in the market, we didn't know how it would be received. At the end of the day, you don't know until you get out there. And one of our first conversations, interestingly enough, was the president of one of the largest credit bureaus, not just in the U.S., but globally, uh, on the commercial side. And he looked at this and he said, you know, at our company, We've built what we believe to be credit decisioning for small business, V1. Mm. You guys are building V2. And when we heard that from this individual with this pedigree, this level of you know credibility, I mean, we knew at that point um, we were on the right path. And what I'll tell you, Lou, is that's the type of response and energy we've gotten along the way in terms of everyone we've talked to and, um, you know, shown the technology. One individual who's a former CTO of one of the largest core banking platforms uh, provider in the world, big, big U.S. company said, and I quote, I've been waiting 40 years for a company to show me what you're showing me. I'm in. He actually personally invested. He like wrote a check kind of mm. on the spot. So it's been that kind of energy, that kind of excitement and reaction. And we've been able to carry that over into the pilot programs that we've launched, which we've seen with great success. And now we're in the process of onboarding some paying customers. So we're we're super excited. We know we have a great product. And ultimately, we believe that we're going to be able to impact a lender's business uh, significantly and help mm -hmm. them approve more customers along the way and get money back into our communities. I love it. And, and I love the, the the ultimate goal and purpose of how this is happening is still so near and dear to your heart, which is, which is great. Let's talk about running a company. Um, sure. Obviously, as as a small business guy, you're, you're, you've started off with, you've had multiple startups that you've launched, and obviously you love doing this. Uh, Talk about this experience right now in the role that you're in. You've got a lot of hats that you're wearing. You're 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 messaging to the company. You're uh, you're messaging uplink to those that are out there, looking at investors, talking to new potential lenders that are out there. You're managing your team, managing the technology, all this stuff. Ron, what hat do you like wearing most with all the many hats that you have to put on each day? Uh, I'm I'm a sales guy. Pure and pure. That's the hat I enjoy the most. So uh, like yourself, who has this gregarious, warm energy personality, Lou, if I could just be a, a portion of what you're bringing, that would be fantastic. But at my core, that's who I am. So for me, it's I just love talking to people. I love having conversations, whether it be with potential customers, potential partners, potential investors. You know, that's that's what I love. Um you're right. I have to wear many hats today as the CEO and the fact that we are running lean. And so certainly there are a lot of other things that I focus on during the day to day that maybe in a year or two, I won't focus on as much Well, there'll be others supporting it. But ultimately at my core, I love, I love the interaction with others and I love the, the sales, the marketing, the business development part of it. This um, from the technology and the way that you're gathering all this together at Uplink, and this is actually my my technology curiosity hat is here. Uh, um, are there unique things, algorithms, or pieces together that are they're specifically geared towards helping the lender right now? But you're providing a lot of information that might be used 
for other types of decision. Have you thought about the fact that the way that Uplink is actually positioning and looking at information is unique onto itself and maybe can be used for other types of decisions? Well, uh, you know, we we get approached by that all the time. Um, the biggest sort of the the biggest comment we get is, can we migrate this over into a consumer environment? Right. That's a I we get that several times a week. It it appears, and of course, um, it makes sense for that question to be asked. And can it go into other types of industries? Can it can it impact real estate? Can it impact insurance? Can it impact other industries that would see value in understanding small business financial performance and 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 believing and and getting the comfort in the predictive element of our tech? The answer is yes mm. uh, for the long term, but the short term answer is what we've told everybody and what we continue to tell ourselves are you know we're focused on small business. We don't want to deviate from that core. We need to get incredibly, incredibly good and successful in the market with our core mission. And then at a certain point, we could look to expand. I love it. Ron, to to being an entrepreneur all these years and obviously having successful runs throughout the years and this new venture, I'm sure will only continue on this path, means throughout your whole entire life, you've been thriving. But we all have those days when we're not quite kicking on all cylinders, or we've had an off day or ups and downs like anybody else. What I love to ask guests on this program, Ron, is when you are having an off day or things aren't quite flowing the way you'd like to, and you want to get yourself back on the thriving track, what practice do you seek or maybe what individual do you seek out to do so? That's a really great question. And that's a tough question because you're absolutely correct. Um, and I've had more than one bad day. I've had a lot of bad days and you know what i'll tell you is all of my startups have been with through partnerships so um you know you have some great partners you have some okay partners and then you have some not so great partners and i've had all of the all of the above so it's it's not an easy thing there's a lot of there's a lot of ups and downs and, you know, at times I get the crap kicked out of me and how do I deal with it? Well, at that moment, it's like, it's, it's painful. And, you know, a lot of people, everybody has a technique that I think works for them. You know, I've heard people tell me, well, they go work out. I've heard people tell me they go do yoga or they meditate or they just go for a walk. All of those are great if they work for you. Um, you know, for me, for me, what I'll tell you is, you know, I, tr I try to take a breath. I try to take a bit of a pause, maybe a bit of a, a break, a half hour to an hour. I'll even watch TV or in some cases, I'll even go and have an, a nap if I need to in the middle of the day. But I don't, I can't let it get me down for an extended period of time because that's A, not who I am, and B, the business will suffer. Hmm. So for me, those are the little things that I do that, that work for me. Everybody, I'm sure, has something that works for them. And that's fantastic because we're all special and unique. And um, I would just encourage everybody today, mental health and the issues we, you know, society has had, I don't think it's specific to entrepreneurs. Uh, I think we all have someone we know or ourselves um, who have gone through some mental health issues. And I'm actually just super excited that there is a lot of information about that today, a lot of recognition about that today, a lot of support about that today, because I'll tell you like 25 plus years ago when I started as an entrepreneur, you know, you 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 know, you didn't hear the words mental health. If you did, it was taken in a very negative yeah connotation in a yeah. negative connotation. So, yeah. um, so we also try to be very, very want to be clear, empathetic with others in our community, whether they be employees, whether they be suppliers or customers who are struggling at times. And you can tell at times when people are struggling. And I think what we've seen in terms of success is if 
you know, we bring the humanity into business. We, we lead with empathy and purpose that all that other stuff that everybody cares so much about money and success, those things fall in line. If you do the right things in advance. Yeah. Let's do the admin part of the show here, Ron. Share with the listeners where everybody can find you or Uplink, websites, social handles. We will put it all in the show notes, but it gets more engagement when they hear it from you. Yeah, the biggest one is our website, uplink.co. Let's go check it out. Um, we'd love for you to, to come and visit our website. Additionally, what I'll tell you is LinkedIn. We use LinkedIn an absolute ton. So please go check us out on LinkedIn, uh, Uplink Financial Technologies. That's our that's sort of our, our LinkedIn gig. Those would be the main two. We do have um, we do have a Twitter handle, and I'm not even sure what it is to be <laughs> candid. Like so, well, because we've had so many Twitter handles over the last few months. But if you if you if you just go in and put it uh, at Uplink Financial. You'll you'll find you'll us. Find. So, and listeners, yeah. that's U P L I N Q to get to Uplink. Q, Excellent. Q. All right. That's right. That's right. Uh, Ron, are you ready to I'm go ready. down Fun Street with me here? Oh, I'd love to. I can't wait. Fun Street. I mean, th th this we've is we've been having fun from the, the very beginning. I, I mean, I only came on the show for Fun Street. So. I, I actually heard yeah. that about you. You're very yeah. particular. Why don't Why don't you share with the listeners? You gave a a, a split choice as to um your your all time favorite movies. Yeah. So I gave two. First is When Harry Met Sally. So you talked earlier about, Ron, when you're down, what do you do? Well, sometimes I'll even put in a movie. Mm -hmm. Harry Met Sally, to me, is a classic movie. Um, it just, it's a feel-good movie. It's yeah. a feel-good movie. It's not one of those epic love stories or anything like that. It's just a feel-good movie about two people who... One day took a trip from Chicago to New York and then parted companies and then over the course of the next 10 years became friends and eventually got married. So yeah. it's just a great movie. I would encourage and and in my opinion, has possibly the greatest movie scene of all time. Are you talking in about this at, movie? At Katz's Deli, I assume. And <laughs> Yes, if you don't know what scene that is, <laughs> just wait for the deli scene. Um, just wait for the deli scene with Meg Ryan, and you'll 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 quickly but, understand what uh, I mean. I most I think I think spoiler alert for those who have seen it, but they'll, they'll get a chance. But that's awesome. And you gave another one. You shared another one. Yeah, the other one's uh, kind of on the other side of the fence. A few good men. Yeah, just love that movie. Love the power behind that movie in terms of seeing two brilliant uh, actors. And, um, you know, and Nicholson and Cruz love what, at its core what that movie is supposed to represent. I have a military background as well, not U.S., but I, I have one as well. And, you know, it just that movie really impacted me in many ways. And, of course, again, has one of the most iconic scenes yeah. For me, in 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 all movies, when Nicholson and Cruz face off in the last yeah. scene of the movie, my, so my, to speak. My, I'm holding yeah. a glass of water. My favorite scene is when he grabs the cup of water and he's shaking because he knows the next where he's going to take this conversation and the look that uh, Kevin Pollack, the actor, has it looking at him, basically saying, "Don't do it, <laughs> yeah. don't go there." But he still goes ahead and does it and still does it. Goes out. Yeah, great movie. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Ron, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. I want the first thing that comes to your mind. These are things that lift you up, that motivate you, that make you feel good, that basically make you thrive. I know okay. you're ready. You're ready. Here we go. I'm always ready. Yeah. Of late, a song that you love to hear or one that pumps you up? Invincible. Oh, all right. I like that. We haven't had that one in a bit. A favorite food that is not a dessert? Pizza. Favorite dessert? Cake. <laughs> what kind of cake? <laughs> cake is I don't know, man. I like all kinds of cake. Uh, I would tell you strawberry shortcake. I like strawberry Okay, shortcake. strawberry shortcake is a good one. An activity you wish you did more of? Baseball. Say that again? Baseball. So you, you did you play growing yeah, up? Yeah, you know what? I'll tell you. Can I share a story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Okay, this is the mid-80s. Okay, I'm really dating myself. We are in a very small school. I'm on the team, on the senior baseball team. 
And we are playing in the finals, in the regional finals for the opportunity to go to, this is, I'm dating myself, the exhibition stadium. So that was before the big dome. Yeah, yeah, but Toronto, we would have been yeah. playing at, you know, the Blue Jays home field against, um, you know, a rival school in Toronto if we win this last game. So, of course, because we're a small school, we're more of an academic school, the drama teacher, who's the coach, decides, I think it's a good idea to start all the backups. We were down after two innings, 10-0. Mm -hmm. He then said, you know what? It might be time to put in the starters. We ended up losing the game 10-9. to Ooh. So, you know, for if there's one thing, we all have that kind of moment where, oh, man, if we had just started at a full strength, we could have been playing a professional baseball field. Um, we would have lost because the team that ended up, um, you know, representing the Toronto region was incredible, had a major league pitcher as mm. a starting pitcher we would have we would have been killed but it would have been a it would have been a fun and great experience so yeah i do wish i do wish i played more a little bit more baseball than i used to an activity you wish you did less of lying on the couch <laughs> okay aside from your power naps to restart and recharge yourself totally yeah get it. yeah ron if i could snap my fingers and you can be anywhere in the world where are you Probably Bali. Ooh. Okay. Have you been? No. Okay. I've, I've never been either. It always looks very good in pictures. It looks like a good It looks spot incredible in pictures. You know, all those huts on the water yeah. and the, <laughs> the crystal clear water. Um, I've seen some movies that have been shot there. It looks incredible. So, yeah. Share, Bali. share with the listeners what's behind you right here because we're in a cool spot here at Uplink. You're uh, you're overlooking what? We're looking at a new place in Toronto, yes? We are in the, global, the new global headquarters for Uplink, but the real credit goes to Mars. Mars is one of the largest innovation hubs and communities in the world. They've just opened up a brand new fa facility here downtown Toronto off of the water. It's called the Mars uh, Waterfront Innovation Center. They've they've done this in partnership with the University of Toronto, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, um, and it's 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 just a great place for startups to reside. And of course, there's going to be a ton of events here and conferences all around tech, all around startups, and everything that falls within that ecosystem. So that's calling in from Ron Benegby. Uh true entrepreneur everybody check out uplink u-p-l-i-n-q and uh, we'll put all the links and show notes to you hey continued success and i love entrepreneurs who have that purpose in mind and helping those small business owners out and we really appreciate that here on thrive loud so thank you for coming on the program and sharing your message lou thank you it was a blast you got it my friend and to all our listeners out there thank you for joining us and until next time keep moving onward and upward and remember be brief be bright be gone You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening.